Hi everyone, in today's video, we are going to discuss a very, very tricky and commonly asked problem. A reservation system, especially an airline reservation system. Now, this seems to be a very easy problem at first, but let's go over the aspects like what special things do we need to handle in this problem. So why is this problem especially hard, right? So definitely for a flight, there are limited seats per specific flight. So we have some limited resources and we want to book those, book those resources. And uh, those resources in our case is flights. There are multiple users. So there are parallel requests coming where multiple users are asking for the same seat. So limited resources and multiple users contending for the same resource. We, knew, we do need faster, we do need specific flight search capabilities. That's another thing we need to handle. And definitely the other aspect we need to handle is that flights are only booked when payments are successful. Let's say you booked a flight, you locked the flight seats, but your payment failed, right? Do your payment succeed, but your request failed. So we need to handle these scenarios, right? So especially if someone is asking you this problem, then the meaty aspect of this problem which you need to discuss is there are limited resources, there are parallel requests coming to book those limited resources, we want to have better search capabilities over flights and then we want to have better mechanisms to handle failures, be it network failures or anything. So similar things can be asked in a certain set of problems, right? Some similar problems that could be uh, matching this use case is other reservation systems like train, hotels, movie reservation systems. And a very commonly asked problem which candidates fear a lot is flash sale. In the flash sale also, you have limited resources, you have multiple users contending for those limited resources, you need search capabilities, you need failure handling scenarios along with payments, right? So that's why this problem is very critical, very commonly asked in uh, financial organizations and a very interesting problem for that matter as well. So let's begin and let's see how we open different aspects or peel different aspects of this problem one at a time, all right? So let us start with something very, very simple, all right? Let's see what is the high level diagram if we are building an airline reservation system. So we have two sides of the problem. We have clients, we have airline admin portal, all right? So clients essentially need two capabilities. Clients would need search capability for flights. Clients would need book capability for flights. And on the other hand, the admin portal should be able to add flights. And now we have this black box that's an airline reservation system which we want to open up in the interview one at a time. So at a very high level, it's always good to discuss the high level design, the component diagram at first with the interviewer so that you are both on the same page. So we have one interface facing the clients, another interface facing the admin portal and this black box, that's an airline reservation system, which we want to open up. That's the part of the interview. And that's how you actually lead the discussion during your interview. Now, once you have made this high level diagram, it's uh, very easy to discuss the functional requirements, the FRs, and the non-functional requirements, the NFRs in our case, all right? So let's start with the functional requirements. Definitely, we need to search for a flight. We need to provide this capability for users to search for flights. We need to provide this capability for users to book a specific flight. We need for users to be able to make payments, but for now, let's say, that uh, the payments are being handled through a third party uh, APIs like Stripe and PayPal and whatnot, right? So we want to in-house build the search and book capabilities and depend on third party uh, interfaces for payment integration. 
now if you have built a very large system right that's where the interviewer can essentially judge whether you are able to come up with optional scopes or not right so if you are building a very mature airline system and if you have already worked on some mature systems then you realize that you just not need the search and book capabilities and payments you need some other auxiliary services around this airline reservation system right so even though you are not implementing this optional scope as part of the interview do mention them because the interview gets to know that yes you have already worked on specific systems where these auxiliary services are needed for example in our case we need some auxiliary services which i have mentioned as part of the optional scope we might need a notification service if the booking for the user has been confirmed you might want to notify the user through whatsapp email and what not we might need a user analytics service for adsense discounts and all those aspects right so you can say that these are optional scope if you get time you can implement them but you might want to handle as part of your design that your design should be extensible to support these optional scopes in future right so very critical come with basic functional requirements do come with optional scope design your basic system such that these optional scopes could be handled in future okay so these three things are very key makes sense now let's move to the non functional requirements for now okay so let's see what are the non functional requirements for such a kind of system so we should be able to book the airlines from all around the globe okay and since uh, it's a revenue generating service right and and search should be highly available but booking should be highly consistent now that's a key factor so whenever you're in interview so interview is ask like do you want the system to be highly available or do you want the system to be highly consistent so you can say that some parts of the system needs to be highly available and some parts of the system need to be highly consistent so it's not like that's there's one thumb rule that the entire system needs to be highly available it can be but ideally it's not the case right there are some parts of the system which have availability preference over consistency and some parts of the system which have consistency preference over availability just in our case we prefer availability for search service that is if the admin portal has added a flight and users are not able to immediately search that flight that's fine so that newly added flight could be eventually consistent for the users that that's work for us right but the users should be able to search flights it's not like if i have added a new flight so the entire search service should be stopped and users should not be able to read any flight at all or search any flight at all so the search service should be highly available but the booking system or the booking service should be highly consistent because if you have received that your booking is confirmed and again you read about your booking status it should not be the case that now your booking status is coming as unconfirmed once your booking status is confirmed all the subsequent read request for the booking status should be confirmed so your system for booking should be highly consistent but your search service should be highly available keep as a rule of thumb that your entire service you can't decide that the entire service should be highly available some components need to be highly available based on use case some components need to be highly consistent based on use case definitely as we discussed that the concurrent users for the booking request is a very key factor which we need to discuss this is entirely the meaty part of the interview which we are going to discuss in the end definitely the latency of search should be as low as possible all right so these are some key non functional requirements that you should come up with and then for the scale part you should essentially ask your interviewer like how much scale are we expecting let's see that we have an active search uh, for the uh, from users for around 100k active searches that are that are being supported as part of our uh, airline reservation system out of that let's say we are supporting 100 flights 
across different source and destination the total number of lights we support are 100 but since since imagine that in 100 flights if there are 100 seats so there could be potentially daily bookings of at max 10 to 20k right if, if the number of seats in flights are 100 to 200 so maximum bookings that we can support is 10k to 20k so probably the interviewer might not give the daily bookings you might have to come up with the logic i just explained now the interviewer should definitely give the active searches and daily flights so if you have active searches of 100k if you have daily flights of 100 and each flight has 100 to 200 seats so you can have some daily bookings of around 10 to 20k right now you are clear with the non-functional requirements you have come up with some sort of scale for your backend airline reservation system you are also clear for in scope and out of scope functional requirements as well and you have also what you have done you have done the high level design for your system now you want to dive deep right so we'll dive deep into two steps first the scale requirements the capacity estimations and then the backend systems right okay now let's let's do the capacity estimations first okay so there are two aspects where we'll do the capacity estimations we'll first define what apis we do need to support and their capacity tps estimates then we'll need to define the schema for our various databases and then come up with the storage estimates right so usually as part of capacity estimates do these two things define apis and their tps estimates define database schema and their storage estimates that's what we are going to do here okay so what i have added is for our reference i have added the high level design i have added the scale requirements for us okay now as part of the high level design let's first target the client side of the problem we can ignore the admin side of the problem for now because this is uh, most of the interviewers might be interested in this side of the problem right so let's let's target that first so based on our discussion there are two functional requirements the search and the book we want to support so let us define two apis for each of them right so we have a search api we have a book api so the search api should ideally take these three inputs like uh, that's how we mostly search in a general uh, airline reservation system like we want a source from where we want to board we want a destination where we want to reach and the date where we uh, on which date we want to go now this this uh, search api should give us a list of uh, flights the possible flights which we can book and then there is a book API so once the user have selected a specific flight and a seat so we should book the particular flight and seat for the customer so that's the book API that is there so we have defined the structure for the various APIs right so this is a read API this is a, a write API and we have defined the structure for these two APIs now we need to do estimates for the TPS estimates for these two APIs, right? Now let's see search. So we have already discussed that there are 100k searches per day, right? So we have 100k searches per day. So how many seconds we have in a day? We have 86400 seconds in a day, right? Now let's imagine this is uh, 10 power 5 and let's assume this is also 10 power 5. So we have around 1 TPS for our search api that's not that big right one tps is a uh, very normal uh, tps that we can very easily support let's see the tps for book api we have 10k bookings booking requests coming over a day uh, so it's 10 power 4 upon 10 power 5 so we have 0.1 tps for book api so what kind of system do we have now our search or the read apis have more tps than the write apis right so we essentially have a read heavy system and that read heavy system is on search 
right that's good good to discuss like what kind of system what kind of nature of your system is it's a read heavy system and that read requests are majorly coming from the search part okay good to know good to know now let's let's move to the second step let's move to our database schema and then its specific capacity estimates just like we did previously we have our high level design we have our scale requirements now let's come to what sort of databases we need to support now here i'll just define the database schema i will not come over what kind of database like mysql nosql we are planning to support i'll come it as part of the core design which we are going to do next but let's discuss about the schema first okay so i was thinking that we need three basic level of details definitely there will be other details like payment user and all those stuff but uh, we can we can discover uh, we can we can discuss some core databases that we essentially want to support as part of this uh, system design okay and then that's okay to discuss the core database schemas only because you might have a lot of uh, database details that that could be there but the key ones is something that the interviewers usually look for okay so i think we need flight information this is regarding the flight metadata right we need a flight id that's the primary key we need source destination on which we need to have an index because see that search was on three things source destination and date right so we definitely need an index on source and destination then uh, this is a, a concatenated field on which we had an index we might want to add source and destination separately as well we have a departure date no i have added partition key for it on it for now let me explain you in the end why i have added it soon we have departure time we have duration of the flight we have airlines and then we have a boolean where we want to check whether the booking is open for that flight or this flight is closed for booking so this this mostly would be required to apply some filters or those things we might apply client side filters right on the uh, like as as on make my trick website like you can have filters like evening flights morning flights and all those things right so you could apply a lot of filters on the client side as well on a lot of attributes like i just want to book uh, american airlines i just want to book the specific airlines right so i i just want to book flights that are under the duration of 3 hours right so you can essentially apply filters on any of these fields like booking open airlines duration right departure time so what i was thinking is at the back end side the very probable filter that comes to my mind at the first glance is booking open i just need to pull only those flights from my backend database which have their booking open right the rest of the filters can be applied at the client side now we all agree about the primary key we all agree about the index and and why we have concatenated source and destination because we wanted to have a common index right now why why have i added departure time now if the scale of this table is very huge let's say if the scale of this table is very huge in future and i want to have faster search queries and i have three dimensions to search one is date one is source one is destination so source and destination is solved by this index how will essentially i be searching based on date so if my database is very huge i can essentially partition my database based on date and uh, now since sharding or partitioning is based on date i can essentially route my request to a particular partition for that date only for which the user has uh, essentially made the request for and then i can essentially do what i can essentially do an index on source and destination and then pull in my specific flights right that's where based on my search criteria i have added index on source and destination partitioning on departure date and this is my primary key and this is my filter because when i'm uh, partitioning based on date i am pulling flights for a specific date only 
then based on my index for source and destination I'm pulling flights serving between that source and destination now I need to apply filter that I just need to pull those flights which have their booking status as open right so this way I this 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 database will help me serve the search flights criteria right the search API so this database would essentially back this search flights API okay and how have which fields have we added and which fields have we taken for various indexing partitioning and filtering uh, we have discussed for now okay now within a flight there are multiple seats right so for a given flight ID we have a seat ID so flight ID F1 would have seat 1 2 3 12 14 and stuff like that right so we would have a composite primary key in this table that is uh, composed of flight ID and seat ID now there could be some extra fields around the seat as well right is it an economy seat is it a business seat and other things like leg space window seat and all those metadata fields could be there I have ignored because they don't add much value to this uh, design discussion but other key thing is I want to actually might have a filter that whether that seat is available or booked because I might have to show a user when he's checking that whether that particular seat is available for booking or not right so this flight seat information would be essentially backing the book flight API right and then once that uh, bookings have been done I might need another table where I have booking information that this is the booking ID where this customer booked this flight and seat and there is an attached payment transaction ID that and this payment details would be part of some another table which we have not covered in now because we are dealing with third party integrations right but we would still maintain that table might not be that useful to discuss in this design but I still add it as a foreign key for this booking information so ideally we are able to see these three tables that could be part of our use case this would back our search flight api and these two would back our book flight api right now once we have discussed the database schema the uh, usage of these databases and uh, what would be the primary key indexes partition key and filters now let's let's discuss the storage scale right what would the storage estimates for one year or five year scale right okay so let's let's discuss first about the flight information table and then the flight seat information table so the flight information seems a little bit bigger we can assume that let's say the size of one flight information record is 1 kb let's 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 assume that right so how many flights are there in a particular day so if we have 365 days in an year we have 100 flights in one day and one flight record is 1 kb so let's say if we make it 36.5 this becomes 1000 and 1000 kb essentially becomes 1 mb so we have a 36.5 mb information stored for one year now let's say if we have a year on year growth rate of 20% 30% we can imagine that we have a max 1 GB storage per year so for 5 years would at max have a storage requirement of 5 GB and that's not very very huge that's a very minimal storage requirement for flight information so now earlier we were discussing about partitioning key we were discussing about indexes and a lot of those things but now when you have seen that the data size is very less like for one year is just 36 36 to 40 MB right so you might not even need indexes and partitions and distributed storage right so the database scale is very high oh, sorry very low so if it had been high we would have discussed these things but it's okay to discuss these things with the interviewer and it's okay to discuss that we might not need a lot of those things because the size or scale of that is very low but okay to discuss for large scale use case because the interviewer should know that you know this stuff okay now let us see the information about the flight seat information now this is not that huge so we can assume that the record size is 100 bytes so within a year we have 365 days 
right and uh, we have 100 flights in one day each flight have 100 to 200 seats right so these many records are there in one day these many records are there in one year and each record is of 100 byte so if you will multiply this your uh, one year storage requirements would be 3 to 4 GB right so your five year storage requirement for flight seed information would not cross more than 15 GB for five years right and that's also not very huge right so you can discuss with the interviewer that the scale requirements be it for storage and the scale requirements be it for TPS is not very huge in this problem now you would have seen that okay that's a very easy problem but that's where this problem becomes tricky now the interviewer can essentially uh, circle you into very confusing questions right the interview can say that i am a startup i have very less scale requirements do i need to build distributed systems do i need to have replicas do i need to have microservice architecture so the interview can ask you these questions right because the scale requirements for apis tps and the scale requirements for database storage is very less then the interview will ask you do you need microservice architecture do you need distributed storage do you need distributed systems if you need it why do you need it right because earlier as well we agreed we might not need partitioning indexing and all those things because the scale is very less so that's where you have to justify your answer and uh, how would you justify the answer let's let's discuss that right so let's discuss why do we in what all various cases do we need distributed storage right so we usually need distributed storage systems for three major use cases so if we want to scale our reads right now let's imagine you have a single database machine and this single database machine is serving all your read requests and now imagine your read request is increasing quite a lot that your single machine is not able to serve those requests so just to scale your reads what would you do you would essentially have read replicas right you would essentially have caching layer as part of your system but if your read tps is very high is a read tps very high no it's just one tps so we might not need read replicas or caching in our use case right what if we want to read uh, scale reads and writes both right we might need sharding so uh, if we want to especially scale writes we might need partitioning in our data we might need sharding in our data but our write tps is also very less right and uh, that is like 0.1 tps we we might not need to essentially scale those things right before covering the third point there is one more requirement to have distributed systems let's say our storage is very high we are storing petabytes of data that is not fitting into one machine then also we might need to shard our data across partition our data across multiple machines right so that is a third requirement so before going over the fourth we essentially distribute our data to multiple machines for storage because of different requirements scaling reads scaling writes scaling storage so none of these three requirements is coming as part of this system but still we want to have the storage is distributed because of the fourth requirement right so let's say we have stored all our data into one machine and that single machine is essentially serving all the requests right so if that single machine goes down we have lost our data we have lost uh, all the api requests for all the users so having a single machine storing all the data serving all the requests would bring a single point of failure for serving requests in storage we don't want to do that that's why even though our scale for reads writes and storage is not that high to justify the single point of failure we might want to have a distributed system we want to have a distributed storage system right now the person can ask you do you need distributed services right distributed systems as part of uh, this this uh, back end back end design right you can say that yes i need a microservice architecture because i have different functional uh, 
requirements which I need to serve for client like booking is separate search is separate I don't want to have a monolithic architecture where if one goes down the other also goes down I want to have different microservices for each of these use cases which I'm serving for clients and uh, and and that's where each of these use cases like booking and uh, search would be able to scale independently and one won't be a point of failure for other so that's where you need to justify that even though your scale is not that high for reads, writes and storage, still you want distributed storage, still you want distributed systems, microservice architecture and why do you want that, right? So if you'll have this discussion where explaining line by line all these things, then the interviewer would know that you have idea about when to use distributed systems why to use distributed systems and all those things right so this could be a tricky question where people can get stuck in but if your basics are clear then you would be able to easily crack this part of the problem right okay makes sense now now let's move to the core design part right so now we are coming to the very critical aspects of the problem Ideally, the flight search flow is not also that critical. Post the flight search flow, we have the booking flow. And this booking flow is very critical, which I want to discuss with all of you, right? So let's quickly complete the flight search flow. And then we'll spend a considerable time on the booking flow for the matter. Okay. Just one second, I'll have some water. So, sorry for that, uh, guys. Uh, I got thirsty after speaking quite a lot. So let's let's um, start with the flight search flow, right? So we have these clients which are using mobile applications or web applications. So they are making search requests based on the API uh, schema we discussed above, and these search requests essentially pass through a load balancer. Now you can say that why do we need a load balancer? We discussed that. We don't want to have this uh, search service as a single machine serving this request. We at least want to have two, three machines so that each doesn't become a single point of failure. Maintaining these two, three machines, we need a load balancer, right? So that's the above discussion we had. We might not need to repeat it again. We might need a load balancer. We might need a distributed search service. And this distributed search service is backed by a database that is holding this flight information. And we have already discussed about the schema of this database. We have already discussed about the storage requirements of this database, right? Now, let's see what kind of database do we need? Like, do we need MySQL database? Do we need NoSQL database? Let's, let's discuss that, right? So we discuss about clients, we discuss about API, we discuss about load balancers, we discuss about distributed search service, we discussed about database schema, we discussed about storage requirements for the database. Now the last thing left for us is to discuss about the type of database we would use. All right. Now ideally, we need a MySQL database where I have some asset requirements, transactional requirements, right? Uh, I would use a NoSQL database if my data scale is very high, I might need inherent partitioning, sharding, right? So I would need a NoSQL database. But here, none of those things is coming out. Neither do I have acid and transactional requirements, nor my data scale is very high where I need uh, inherent sharding and partitioning, right? So if we are starting small, I can I can essentially start with the MySQL database. Uh, I think that would that would essentially serve my use case. But clear use case of MySQL and NoSQL is not coming out as part of this search API, right? Makes sense. I think that's that's very easy to discuss. This is one flow. But now once the user has made a request, so this request should also be published to some notification service like SNS or a PubSub module like Kafka so that if you are building any services in future, made user analytics service, made discount ad service, made notification service, so those services could, could consume these search requests 
or or the user clicks or the user actions on the uh, application and take appropriate analytics discounts and notification actions on them right so though we are not building these services but we are building this uh, interface from which these services could consume and scale now ideally this should be a pub sub that can have multiple consumers we might not want a queue that can have a single producer and a consumer we might want to add sns or kafka which support multiple consumers for us because there could be multiple services needing this click information right makes sense so i think this is very simple the search flow is very simple we have discussed a lot of things already but uh, we didn't discuss about this uh, extensibility aspect so it's important to discuss this aspect it shows you are thinking through about future extension as well and i think we are clear about why we used mysql right and and uh, that's it that's it <clears throat> i think this is the very critical part of this design we have talked a lot talked about different different things but we essentially want to come to this aspect very quickly because that is what the interviewer is looking for that how are you booking flights right and this is where a lot of things would come i would want you to spend some time look at the diagram and uh, we can start now okay so let's see we have a client here uh, the client is essentially have selected a particular flight so we have the client id we have the flight id we have the seat or the seats so there could be single seat there could be multiple seats which the client wants to book so as part of that the client has sent all these details so the client id flight seats and uh, what it want to book uh, as part of this request and sends it to a load balancer we have a distributed booking service at the back end now now that is where the critical part right that is where the critical part and I'll, i'll just get over with before what is the booking flow for us i'll just go it over with the extensibility part we discussed so what and when all these bookings are happen we might want to provide this information to a multi consumer sns or a multi consumer pub sub module like kafka so that other services can consume this right so this part till now is very similar to the uh, search service right but this part here is different from the above part is different from the search service and this is very critical to discuss let's let's dive deep into it right so let's say when a user gives a booking service request to this uh, back end uh, system so the booking service essentially has to do multiple things as part of booking seats right so the booking service has to one go to this flight seat information table and check whether those flights are available to be booked right and the booking seat information would have to check that availability for all of those uh, seats which the user want to book if the user wants to book five seats the booking service would have to check for all the five seats if those five seats are available that's part 1 once the seats are available the booking service would have to integrate with the third party for payment completion that's part 2 once the seats are available payment is done the booking service would have to update the booking information in the booking information table that's part 3 and once the booking information has been updated the booking service would have to mark those seats as unavailable or booked so that different users are not able to book those seats now now there are four steps which we have discussed check for the availability of seats complete the payments record the booking information and then finally mark the seats as booked so these are four steps which this booking service would have to do as part of booking specific seats for a user right now what is some very very critical aspect of this four steps right so this four steps need to be atomic when i say atomic it means either all of those steps should succeed or neither of those steps should succeed right so let's say if we are able to check the booking information and those seats are available then we go ahead and do a payment 
the payment doesn't succeed we might want to free this available seats from our use case right let's say if we didn't if you're not even able to interact with the payment uh, gateway our request just drops in the network all right we might want to roll back this initial step let's say these two steps also succeed so we are able to check for the availability of the seats we're able to complete the payment but we are not able to update the booking information all right we then again also want to roll back all the steps so all the four steps which we discussed should be part of a transaction all right or at least they should be executed so that they behave like a transaction that either all succeed or no one succeeds so that's where you might want to discuss with the interviewer that all these four steps first discuss all the four steps then discuss that you want to execute these four steps such that they are part of a transaction then you should discuss the complexity now there is one complexity there these database this service this database and again this database which we are integrating as part of this four steps these are different distributed systems right so you have to now implement this transaction across different distributed systems that's where it gets complicated right so you have to execute this four steps on different distributed systems so you have to implement distributed transactions and distributed transactions is a very good concept right that's where you can discuss with the interviewer that when you have to implement distributed transactions there are various approaches which you can take and one of those approaches is a two phase commit right and then you can discuss some theory about two phase commit and where it is useful and how do we implement that right so that's very very critical thing to discuss with the interviewer the four steps as part of booking flow why do you need the four steps as part of a transaction now these are not simple transactions these are distributed transactions and what are the possible solutions for distributed transactions and then discuss about two phase commit all right now that's just the first step of discussion that you want to complete as part of this uh, flow now you have discussed about uh, distributed transactions and all those things right now i'll explain you how we are implementing two phase commit here how we are ensuring that this distributed transaction succeeds and all those failure scenarios are handled all right so let's let's focus on one step at a time right and let's dive deep into each of those steps right okay so the first step for a distributed transaction is to go ahead in this database and check if i want to book these four or five seats whether all these four or five seats are available all right now there is one very very important concept if those seats are marked as booked and if we apply the filter on the booking status right so if we apply the filter on the booking status and if those seats are marked as booked we'll definitely be able to know that those seats are marked as booked and they're not available right that's a very easy part so one user makes a request and the user wants to book five seats one of the seats is marked as booked so the user will get to know that he can't book all of those seats and the user's transaction would fail that's an easy part the status part as part of our database schema is handling that right so we don't need to worry about it but the second part that's very important is let's say the user makes a request and all of those five seats are available but in parallel another user makes a request and wants to book two seats uh let's say seat number 1 and seat number 2 but the first user wants to book seat number 2 3 4 5 and 6 right so the seat numbers 2 3 4 5 6 need to be booked by first user and seat number 1 and 2 need to be booked by second user now let's say all of the seats are available and these two users essentially make a parallel request to this database right so this is the concurrency aspect that we want to handle here now how do we want to handle the concurrency aspect is something that is very critical to be discussed with the interviewer so right now i have just explained the problem there are two users both the users have made a parallel request now the seat which both the users are planning to take is marked available now which of the user would be able to essentially take that seat 
Now that's a problem. That's a problem of parallel requests and how are we handling the parallel requests is something that we need to discuss. So first discuss this problem with the interviewer. Now discuss the solution, right? So the solution is serialization for contention. So contention are parallel requests. Now what is serialization? Now you need to explain the interviewer the concept of serialization. I'll explain you what serialization is. Let's say you have a database and uh, this database is essentially holding a particular seat in it. Now user A goes to the database and uh, checks if he is able to book a seat. So definitely the seat is available. So user A is able to book that seat. Now after some time, let's say after five minutes, another user, user B makes a request. So user B is not able to book a seat here because user A has already booked a seat. Now the case which we are discussing is simple because the requests for user A and user B are serial. They are not parallel. First the user A made the request, then the user B made the request. Since user A's requests were before user B, so user A was able to book the seat, but user B was not able to book the seat. Now the simplicity in this problem was our requests were serial. Now imagine on the same database, if user A and user B both make the request. Now if our database is serializable, if our database supports serialization, then what should be the outcome of these two parallel requests? What should be the outcome of these two requests requesting for the same seat? So a serial database in this case should have the same behavior as if this parallel request had come serially. So in our earlier example, when user A and user B requested serially, only one of them was able to book that. Now, a serial database ensures that even if both the requests come in parallel, only one of them is able to book, right? So in short, databases which support serialization support the behavior that if parallel requests come, only one of them is able to book. So serial databases handle parallel requests as if they had come serially. Right, And there are various ways to do that. We have various isolation levels, we have weak isolation levels, we have strong isolation levels, we have serial isolation, uh, snapshot isolation, serializable snapshot isolation. A lot of those ways are there in which databases ensure this behavior that even though requests come in parallel, the outcome should be such that uh, should be uh, same as if they had come serially. Right. So you essentially want to discuss this serialization as a solution for parallel requests. Right. Now you have to come up with one solution that way you, you want to essentially handle serialization in this case. Right. So in this case, we would want to handle serialization using pessimistic, pessimistic locking. Right. Pessimistic locking. Right. Now let's say user A makes a request for seat number one, two user B makes a request for seat number 23456. Now both users need a lock on seat number 2, right? Now uh, only one of those users is able to essentially uh, gain a lock on, on seat number 2, right? So if user A is able to gain a lock for seat number 2, user A's transaction could proceed ahead, but user B's transaction could not proceed ahead. Now, what kind of lock do we want to have? We want to have a four write lock, all right? So that's important because if user A is able to get a lock on seat number two, the user A should have a four write lock so that user B is not able to read that particular seat at all, all right? And essentially, it should fail its transaction. That's very critical to discuss. Then. As part of taking the lock, user A, or if user B is taking the lock, they should implement a TTL on that lock. I'll discuss that why it's critical, why TTL is critical. But let's say whenever someone is taking a lock, a four right lock on that particular row, the user should also implement a TTL on that row. All right. Now, another good thing to discuss with the interviewer is there could be a scenario. Let's say 
uh, user A needs seat 1 and 2, user B also needs seat 1 and 2. User A is able to get a lock on seat 1, user B is able to get a lock on seat 2. Now, user A is waiting for lock on seat 2, user B is waiting for a lock on seat 1. Right now, that's a deadlock scenario. Right now, there could be such deadlock scenarios. So, databases are smarter these days where they identify these deadlock scenarios and they essentially kill one transaction so that the other could succeed. You might not need to come up with a solution for identifying these deadlocks and kill these transactions because these are advanced concepts but you, you can just discuss that the database need to handle these deadlock scenarios. You need to mention that that serialization for parallel requests you are solving by pessimistic locking by taking a four write lock and then you have also implemented TTL on those locks and now I'll explain why TTL is necessary when you are taking a lock right. Let's say user A comes and uh, user A wants to take a lock on seat number 1 and 2, right? So user A makes a request, user A selects that, okay, if seat 1 is available, if seat 2 is available, please take a lock on this, please take a 4 write lock on this and add a lock TTL on uh, these two rows. Then user A essentially moves to the second step. Now let's say this network request drops and we are not able to make any request to the third party payment system. Now, ideally, we don't want these two rows to be in lock indefinitely, right? If we had kept a TTL of one minute, these two rows would have removed their locks and would be available to other users to take a lock on them and book these seats, right? That's why we took a TTL on these two rows. Now, one very important thing is like while you're taking locks, since you're booking multiple seats, right? The part of taking a lock itself should be a complete transaction, right? Because if you're able to take lock, if you're booking four, five seats and able to take four locks and you're not able to take the fifth lock, you're, this, this, just the lock taking part of transaction should fail, right? That's, that's critical to discuss as well, right? Now, it's very important to discuss that you could have optimistic locks as well where you essentially begin the step and before committing if you check that whether your initial state has changed or not if it has changed your transaction fails if it is not changed you commit your transaction it's important to discuss about optimistic locks as well as part of this discussion right even if you're not discussing uh, that's fine because you have come up with some solution but it's okay to discuss optimistic locks if you want to go one step ahead right you can still discuss that there are some scenarios because people mostly think that optimistic locks are like very very good and we should always use that but uh, you might not want to use optimistic locks in some scenarios, right? You can discuss those scenarios with the interviewer, right? <coughs> that optimistic lock should not be used when your system has a lot of parallelism, right? Let's say your system has a lot of parallelism where all of the people are essentially booking seat one, right? So all of them will go and none of them would take a pessimistic lock on them. None of them... Uh, would assume a specific lock on those seat one all of them would assume that they have the lock on it and start working right and uh, let's say there are thousands such people who are taking optimistic lock not pessimistic optimistic lock on seat one and they have started their transaction right so at the end only one would be able to complete and uh, the rest of the 999 transactions would roll back or fail right so let's say if your transactions are heavy operational, right, and so many parallel requests are coming, then you're wasting a lot of compute to assume that you'll have a lock and then proceed. So in this cases, when there are a lot of parallel requests and your transactions are longer, so you should not have optimistic locking. In this case, pessimistic locking is essentially more optimist. Um, it's more uh, like optimal in our case, right? So it's, it's very good if you discussed about the drawbacks of optimistic locking. That's a very advanced concept you can discuss as part of the interview, right? Now, 
let's say before coming to this consistency aspect let's let's discuss that what happens so our, our database supports serialization our database supports serialization using pessimistic locks and uh, i made a request i had to, so what the database supports serialization serialization using pessimistic locks and it also kills uh, deadlocks and it also supports TTL for those logs. So we need a database that supports all these things, right? So we need something like that. So that should be our choice of database. And we also need a database that supports taking logs as a single transaction, right? All those those guarantees are needed. So essentially we went with a MySQL database for flight state information, right? So let's say I need to book seat number one and two and able to get pessimistic lock on both the seats and I've added TTL on them, right? And deadlock scenarios is handled by the database. Now I come back here. I should essentially make a, a payment request to the third party gateway. If my request drops before I'm able to successfully complete a payment, right? Then TTL would handle that these, these uh, locks should be free and other people should be able to book those seats. If I'm able to integrate or able to request for third party but the payment fails now my logic should handle that i should go ahead and free the logs right now and then roll back the transaction if my payment succeeds i come back then what happens in then 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 i need to add the booking information here right payment succeed i'm able to take lock and i'm, I'm supposed to add booking information let's say my request drops right after some time, these seats would be available for people to book, right? But the user who initially made a payment, his payment succeeded, but he's still not able to book the seats, right? So we need an offline refund service who should capture these scenarios and make these refunds at the end of the day. And that's a very good scenario to discuss with the interviewer that you need to essentially capture these failures so you were able to take a lock you were able to make a payment but adding booking information or the last step where you're essentially marking the seats uh, booked that failed right so that particular user who made the payment initially would would not have his booking details added right and then his essentially booking information failed so but he, he made the payment so we need some offline service who checks such scenarios and essentially refunds the user in those cases now let's say this network request didn't fail we are able to add booking information and then finally we are able to mark those seats as booked so once we are able to mark those seats as booked no other user would be able to book those seats right so that way we are ensuring distributed transaction through multiple things right having a single transaction for taking locks taking pessimistic locks ensuring deadlocks are not there adding ttl to our locks right and then finally having this refund service right so that is where this concept of distributed transaction and two-phase commit is uh, very 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 important to discuss with the interviewer to discuss with what could essentially fail like you are not able to call the payment service so your ttl would help you were able to successfully make the payment. So your TTL would help, but refund service would give the refund, right? So all these failure scenarios you should discuss with the interviewer and essentially explain this end-to-end -end booking flow and how it works, right? So this is this is very critical for our use case to explain that. And definitely this is a very meaty part of the interview that you want to juice and take points for, right? Now, there is uh, one very important topic which I want to clarify here that whenever people are coming, right, they don't explain this workflow. They just make a database and say that I need a consistent database so that my booking is consistent, right? But you people need to understand that consistency is a very overloaded term, right? So what I explained earlier, we need to have distributed transactions and serialization. We didn't need to have consistency till now, right? I'll tell you where as part of this flow we need consistency, right? So that is important. It's also called linearization. So once you update the records in the database, right? Let's say the database has three read replicas and you write 
to particular replica now someone is reading the booking status again right so some read replicas have the booking status as booked and some have not booked right so that's where consistency comes in place so all your read replicas should serve a consistent view of the booking status that's where because that's very critical right that's where your booking information table and your flight seat information tables should be supporting consistency and also for example if you have logged a specific row and there are read replicas for that and other user is reading from a separate replica he should be able to see a consistent view for logs as well right that's where your individual databases should support linearization or consistency right this database should support serialization during through pessimistic logs that is not needed in booking information right so that's just mind that consistency is needed in both transactions and pessimistic lead locking is or for serialization is needed in the flight seat information table and through all of these things and refund service you are ensuring a distributed transaction for this to complete right so ideally these are very very advanced concepts to discuss and uh, if you have read designing data intensive applications you will get a lot about um, these things and 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 that's where this is a very very advanced question which seems like an easy question like an airline booking system right and the same concepts of how flash sale works how sale of products if multiple users are able to buy it works so i think that is very critical for people to know and uh, they are asked commonly in uh, financial systems but i hope i was able to answer majority part of the problem so thanks everyone uh, do let me know if you have any comments i it took me quite a lot of time to prepare this content so definitely do like share and subscribe thank you everyone thank you very much